Okay. All right. Well, hey, thank you for tuning in to uh, this month's live stream. Uh, my name's Eric, uh, call sign N1JUR. We got a special guest tonight. Uh, all of us are very excited to have uh, Larry here. Uh, a call sign uh, Whiskey One Alpha Sierra Tango. Um, his CB friends know him as the Big E, but you may better know him uh, as a. Uh, you know, head spearhead, uh, you know, extravagant, um, you know, leader of the Project E, um, which we're all excited to hear about. Um, but uh, as always, like I said, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate uh, everybody uh, who's, uh, you know, uh, listening to the stream here. And uh, as always, uh, as you all know, uh, we are Live Free and Ham. Uh, we're your bi-weekly uh, podcast exploring uh, ham radio topics in New England, New Hampshire and beyond. Um, so whether you are a first time uh, watcher uh, or a first time guest here, we're always excited to have you on. We appreciate your support and appreciate you tuning in to uh, this week's live stream. So before we kind of get into today's show, as I said, my uh, my name is Eric and I'm the host for this evening. Call signs N1JUR. And uh, I have my co-host here join with me. Yep. Ryan W1SNH. And Todd W1STJ. And we have our esteemed guest, Larry. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Larry. I'm Larry, W1AST, outside right. in um, Western Massachusetts. Very cool. All right. Well, hey, uh, before we start off every podcast show, we always like to catch up uh, to let our listeners know kind of what's going on in our ham lives, um, uh, as well as what's going on uh, with the Live Free Ham crew. Um, so just a couple of quick things. Uh, we are um, going to be doing a live stream every month. So this is uh, our live stream for August. So September will be coming up soon. So keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you always subscribe to the show uh, and our YouTube channel. Uh, that way you always get notified when we go live. Um, and uh, as a well, we've got a couple of big announcements. Um, we will be live streaming from the Northeast uh, Exposition in Marlboro this year. So we're all excited. A uh, lot more forthcoming, but uh, keep an eye out uh, to our Facebook and uh, YouTube channels, as well as um, our website for all the details. But we will be there um, on Saturday, the 25th. Uh, all day, we'll be doing a live stream. We'll have a bunch of guests um, uh, on from the forums, um, and we'll be just uh, doing a big giveaway um, for uh, an FT uh, 4XR and a, a gift certificate as well. So please come by, say hello, uh, check us out. Uh, we're always, uh, you know, happy to uh, to meet our, uh, you know, our existing subscribers as well as meet new ones. And um, as uh, a kind of a pre-announcement, in October, uh, Nearfest will be coming up. It's one of our other festivals here in New England um, that uh, will actually be there and more details will be forthcoming. Um, and so uh, keep your eyes peeled both through our website uh, and uh, pay attention uh, to all of our uh, socials as well. All right. So just to kind of uh, set the stage here a little bit, guys, um, as we all ask each other every, uh, you know, episode, you know, what's been going on uh, in your, uh, you know, ham uh, life these days. And so, get, uh, Larry, you are our guest today. So we'll kind of start off with you, if you don't mind. Uh, what's been going on in your ham life? You know, anything you want to share with uh, folks? Uh, above and beyond Big E, um, this coming weekend from Friday through Sunday is the Northeast Ham Exposition in Marlboro. It's hamexposition.org. We have some uh, new and exciting uh, forums, and there's more forums actually at this um, this ham fest than in any other ham fest around the country. Um, we have um, a new um, presentation of um, MCOM trailers. We have new speakers. We have uh, a virtual vendor for the first time, which will be exciting. With a uh, and there's some fantastic raffle prizes from radios that are worth the uh, $3,000 all the way down to a 25 cent bag, which is what I won last year. Um, <laughs> so still in, still in good use though, I hope. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. <laughs> but the, uh, and, and there's a banquet Friday night with a guest speaker uh, sponsored by the Yankee Clipper contest club and a grand prize there. And there's a um, guest speaker of Saturday night, um, which is going to be um, a, a, a should be fascinating. The speaker is local, and um, it's probably going to be uh, above and beyond my understanding. But his initial, from what I've heard about him initially, he sounds absolutely fascinating. And right. of course, it's all related to ham radio, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to, uh, if you're not going with anybody, it's a great way to meet and make new friends uh, around the uh, Northeast. 
and right. um, and have a good meal and, and enjoy ham radio. Very cool. And it's all weekend. So, you know, you don't have to, if you can't go Fridays, you always have Saturdays and, and definitely into Sunday morning, but. Right. Know. And the forums are posted online. It starts with, uh, there's a kit building and other stuff going on Friday. There's a youth forum and, um, you know, all day Saturday and parts of Sunday morning. And then the big uh, door prize drawing, I think is 12 or one o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And then everybody goes home. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, hey, uh, Ryan, uh, over to you. What's, what's been going on in your ham life? Uh, so I'm still picking away at uh, all 50 uh, states worked as a uh, hunter. So I, I got a couple left, which I've been, you know, actively watching the, uh, the web page there when people pop up at parks. So I got a couple left. Um, North Dakota is the big one for me, kind of a l- little bit of a distance. Um, and then actually, it's uh, aside from that, it's been, well, I'm quickly approaching a phase here where uh, right now I'm in my shack. It's in the basement and come winter time, it gets very cold down here. So my big uh, home improvement project is to take the shack apart, insulate the walls, the floor and everything. So I've been uh, unfortunately planning on uh, how to uh, move all the stuff out of here and get that job done. So not looking forward to it, but I I know once it is finished, it'll be uh, much more enjoyable in the winter time. Oh, I can imagine, man. I can imagine. It'll be at least 10 to 20 degrees warmer for sure. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, hey, uh, how about you, Todd? What's been going on uh, with you? I know, obviously, you know, Australia has been uh, really uh, cuddling up to you there over, you know, over the evening hours. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it away. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank Eric for uh, coming over uh, Friday and helping me uh, re-raise uh, my antenna. It had fallen down a couple notches in the trees over the ice storms over we had this past winter. So I was kind of hesitant because I was hitting, Aust- I'm hitting, hitting Australia, New Zealand, like every night I work overnight, it's like five, nine, super strong signals, having QSO has been great. So I was afraid if we raise it up back out of the tree and a little bit higher, we're going to lose that. But fortunately that didn't happen. I think it actually got better. Uh, last night I was working uh, VK3XXY. So I want to give a shout out to him. Uh, his name's Alan. He's from Daisy Hill, Australia, just kind of north. Uh, northeast of Melbourne. But uh, yeah, we had a QSO. I told him about this podcast, so I told him I'd, uh, I'd uh, to, for him to check it out. So if he's listening or if he sees this, uh, he's got a little shout out for uh, down in Australia. But like I said, that's really what I've been up to. Um, just doing that on the, when I'm working these overnights and I'm glad I got my antenna up. I got a lot of projects uh, coming up. I got to do the uh, grounding. I got to get my uh, DX commander up. Uh I don't know what else I got to do, Eric. There's a whole list of things. So that's basically where I'm at. Just note that I am not Todd's personal project manager. So in terms of schedule, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to do that. So. Uh, that's very cool. Well, you know, I'm glad, you know, like I said, I gave you that, uh, you know, caveat, the, the the no warranties expressed or implied that if we raise the antenna, that uh, if you got worse connection, you know, worse contacts, that uh, it wouldn't be my fault. So I'm glad uh, it worked out. My well, hey, and just so a heads up, if you ever need a, Eric's a pretty good shot. One shot. And that thing was like. <laughs> off i'm like wow that was a perfect you couldn't get any better (laughs) yeah well you know if we didn't have to fight the the whatever tree that was in the middle of your yard to get the antenna free from it i think we probably would have been done in record time but uh yeah there was a lot more extra steps but as we all know when we all try to adjust antennas how many times you have to do 25 steps to undo to get back to where you really do want you know get the the antenna i mean mean, we went through a hundred extra feet of power core or Paracord, paracord. Yeah. and we had 60 so it's a it's 160 feet of paracord to get this wire up in this tree so you can imagine how high it is so might, might that, i suggest project potato gun it's actually funny well, that, that's what put it up there that's what put it up there <laughs> so yeah so it, it was good and i appreciate him uh he uh coming by and helping me out with that so and i got to try it out on saturday overnight and that's when I worked uh, Alan out in Australia, and it was a uh, very good uh, QSO, good propagation, and everything was cool. Very cool. All right. Well, wrapping it up with me, I you know I haven't been doing a lot of ham radio just because I've been you know prepping for a whole bunch of other stuff and trying to juggle. But you know, having the flex, you know, gives me that advantage to be able to just when I'm bored in the living room or you know I don't want to watch whatever's being on you know cast on the TV from one of my wife's shows, I always have that flex there and, and available. So that's been fun. I um, have been a lot of work and a lot of, uh, or trying to work some of the YouTubers that are down in Montesano. 
uh, with uh, in Huntsville. Uh, a lot of them been activating that big park down there. So, uh, you know, been trying to pick them off a little bit here and there. Um, and for those that, you know, remember from our previous podcast, I had the, um, you know, the, the web page that I built uh, on uh, my own personal site, uh, which is n1jur.com if you want to check it out. But it's basically, I decided to hunt the, the YouTubers. So I created my own kind of DXCC thing. Uh, and so I just kind of been, you know, adding them to my list. And as I work them, I update them. And, uh, you know, it's been a blast and, and fun to, to do that. So I think, uh, you know, as I continue to plug away, it, it keeps me, um, you know, still on the pace with hopefully one day that I might actually get, uh, you know, Alaska or Hawaii so I can finish my worked all states, which uh, which may never come you know, to fruition, at least while I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> so, I don't know. You, or I you guys don't want to hear that I've already got all those. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> a couple He's, of times over. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I will only hopefully, you know, pray to the ham radio gods that uh, I can, you know, go activate a park somewhere out in maybe New York that, uh, you know, just give me that little extra distance that I might need. So or propagation might work out to my favor when, you know, fall rolls around. So you never know. You know, that's the, the fun thing about ham radios. You never know what you're going to get until you, you, know, you get out there and try. Now you got to taste some DX. <sighs> yeah, that's, you know, I think we're all in that same boat. Uh, Poda has, uh, you know, ruined us all. And we're all just, you know, out there to, to, to try to keep working <laughs> as best as we can with as many DX stations as we can get on our rosters here. So very cool. All right. Well, uh, let's kind of dive into the topic tonight. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of people in the chat. So uh, thank you again for uh, joining us tonight uh, and uh, keep uh, feel free to ask questions along the way. If, uh, you know, uh, we uh, could talk about, uh, you know, the, the, the topic tonight is on Project Big E. Um, for those that aren't familiar with it, um, this is the second year, correct, Larry, that you guys signed? Yes. Okay, so second year. Um, I was actually very lucky uh, to, um, and actually I think I dragged my wife kicking and screaming. Uh, she had said she wanted to go to the Big E, and I had heard that we had ham radio there, and I said, sure, I'll go when I'm usually not one to go to large fairs and, and whatnot, just because I've done them all the time um that uh you know we went and i hunt down the booth and it was a blast because at that point my daughter had gotten her you know technician license so it was just a you know it was a really great scenario to see what was there it was a little tough to find but you know in essence biggie is small and not small by any stretch of the imagination and and we'll get into a little bit of that but uh yeah this year um is definitely uh, you guys are definitely wrapping up you've gotten some uh, great support from both uh you know the division website and promoting that and and doing that but you, you you've taken a lot of the reins, Larry, I think, just in general of putting this together and and just, you know, seeing it through, which has been just awesome. And now that you're kind of in that second year and you're doing a little bit more promotion and getting people more interested and in getting the word out, I think um, it's exciting a lot of those clubs and a lot of the other, you know, people in the area that, you know, they have a, a now a platform that, you know, things can you know, grow and take off from, from, but so to kind of circle back. So project Big E is uh, a project that uh, Larry uh, and his uh, club, I think started out and he'll go into a little detail, um, but you can find all the information. If you're interested, you can either quickly Google project Big E, or you can go right to the New England Div uh, website and they've got a big section up there explaining what project Big E is about and um, kind of a little history behind it. But tonight we really want to kind of give Larry the opportunity to be able to just kind of share what the Big E is, you know, from his expectations, uh, from his ex experience, my mistake there, um, and you know, some of, uh, hopefully share some stories along the way about uh, you know what uh, what they saw last year and what they're going to hopefully expect this year, and and talk a little bit more how people can get involved if you're in the New England area and you want to start helping out or promoting more. Uh, or getting more involved in, in in making the ham curious, the actual hams, you know, and get their license and ticket. Um, but before we dive into that, so Larry, just as kind of a frame of reference, um, you know, if you don't mind sharing just a little bit, kind of what's your ham story been in general, and how did you get your ticket, and you know, kind of where that's led up to, you know, to today. I think I was in sixth grade. A friend of mine came up. My friend Steve came up and said, um, um, "Do you want to talk around the world on short wave?" And I said, "You know, I had no other hobbies and." I said, sure, but let me talk to my parents first. <laughs> so um, we started going to classes for the uh, at the uh, Pioneer Valley Radio Association, which is no longer available. It was at the Red Cross in Springfield. And Steve got his license first, and then I got my license. I was originally WB1, DBY, and I held that for 36 years. Wow. And um, uh, so I got my novice in 77. I got my general in 79, and I got my advance in 81. And um, that was a week before I went to college, and then I'm still in advance. Um, in my heart, I can, you know, the CW is a breeze, but the tech tech part isn't. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, having a lot of fun. I do a lot of CW. I do a lot of sideband. I do 
digital. Um, I've got an arrow antenna sitting in my trunk waiting to be used. I haven't, haven't used it yet. And pretty much anything that interests me. I do QRP. I do um, camping. When I was a Boy Scout leader, I used to bring um, a QRP rig with me and sit down and operate. I've got HF Mobile. Um, I've gotten into D-Star. Um, whatever interests me, I get into. But I love CW. Don't ask me how many CW paddles I have. Begali and N3ZN are getting rich off me. Well, we'll have to ask what your favorite paddle is. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure you say all of them because they're all like <laughs> children. But <laughs> it's, uh, The Begali and the N3ZNs are, are tied. Um, I've got two Begalis, and I'll be picking up a second N3ZN at the AMX one next weekend. Um, <laughs> if they can wind up special for me. Um <laughs> Larry, you just know, out of curiosity, what what are you what speed are you comfortable working at? I can rag to you all day long at sixteen to eighteen words a minute, and wow. while I'm cost, contesting, I can easily do twenty eight to thirty words a minute. Wow! Um, but cool. I can't rag to you at those speeds. I it's, yeah. it's strictly you know the quick uh, call uh, report and section or whatever the report is um, for contesting, and it's a lot easier typing you know who you're talking to and having it being sent out by hitting the function key. Although I can send at that speed too. Sure. But, um, and the, you know, the more you start up the more with CW, the more that you operate it, the better you are at it and the faster you can go once you start ramping up if, if speed is your thing. But in, in the summertime we go camping and, you know, at five or 10 Watts and I'll sit there and rag tube for 20, 40 minutes at a time and CW and it's great. I love it. That's Sweet. awesome. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, so, uh, yeah, so CW obviously is a, a, you know, for some of us here, you know, is we love to talk about it, but <laughs> out of us three, we, we, you know, if you held this at gunpoint, we'd all, you know, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, well, if, if you have an interest in it, there's a group called the Long Island CW club. Um, a good friend of mine, Rich Collins, KK UPS was one of the founders. They, and I've, I've referred a lot of people there and they are phenomenal as far as teaching CW. Oh, very you cool. might be a good person to get on your show in the future. That um, is one. We actually had a, 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 a our previous podcast. We had a Tim a Casey one QDK and he, he is funny because he was in his CW journey, decided to get on TikTok and do letters all the way through the alphabet. And he's like got over like a million followers just alone wow. on like five or six letters. And he was sharing all those experiences. So it, it inspired me obviously, but you know, my key is still <laughs> when winter rolls around, maybe I'll take her out and uh, take her for a spin again and get back under, uh, you know, the grips. Well, there. There's, there's a lot of interest in CW right now. It's, uh, um, but I do, I do digital too. You know, there's some of the old timers say, Oh, FT8 isn't ham radio. I said, but anything that gets people on the air is ham radio. And exactly. Whether yeah. it's now and whatever may happen in the future, there's more things to experiment with. And there's more people never interested in ham radio in uh, CW too. So whatever's out there, you know, experiment with it. There's lots of facets of ham radio for everybody to play with. It doesn't have to be just a certain thing. Very true. Very true. Yeah. We, we all subscribe to that. So for sure you're, you're in good, uh, good sorts here. So, so cool. All right. So this kind of led up, I mean, obviously you had mentioned, uh, and we were talking offline a little bit about how you're involved with your current president of a, a what club again, Hampton, the Hampton County radio association, which, uh, this year's our 75th anniversary, wow. um, wow. of the club and of association with the ARL. And we're located in uh, the Springfield mass area. And we cover an area probably like 30 miles in all directions from Springfield. Um, so we get people that come down, come in from the Berkshires, come up from Franklin County or come down from Franklin County, come in from like um, not quite Worcester County, but the Brook um, uh, out near Palmer and mm -hmm. then all the way down to like Ellington, Connecticut and West Hartford, Connecticut. So it's it, 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 and it's a good club. We don't have any repeaters and we work with and have meetings that anything to do with ham radio. Uh, and we do field day, and you saw my bear picture earlier. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's a story. We'll have to, if we have some time later, we'll have to make sure we dive into a little bit for sure. Um, cool. So, how did you guys like? So, what kind of spurred on the whole project, Biggie? Was it something you guys just had drinking, you know, standing around a campfire and saying, "Hey, we got to do something more because we got this big event," or, or you know, kind of share a little bit about that, and then you know, we can kind of dive into how you piggybacked on top of something as big as the Biggie. <laughs> well, going back to 81, 82, I was um, at that time, uh, the Mount Tom uh, Amateur Repeater Association had a booth at the Big E. At that time, we had a, an antenna up and we passed thousands of pieces of traffic because, of course, there was no such thing as cell phones and portable phones and all that. So we passed traffic all over the world and thousands of pieces of it. 
And uh, that sort of planted the bug. And then fast forward to um, around 20 years ago, there was a booth at the Big E there in the 4-H building. Um, so it was very loud, very dark, very hard to find, and very selective as far as who went in to see it. So not many people viewed it. So since that ended uh, for many years, I kept thinking Big E, Big E. And then um, right around the center of COVID, it's like, all right, let's start seeing what we could do. Um, and um, I threw the idea out at the uh, New England cabinet meeting and the then director of New England said, it'll never pass, it'll never happen. The league won't help you. Um, I won't support you, blah, blah. Wow. Um, but everybody else who was listening to it, I got tons of emails and things says, let's do this. This is gonna work. This is a great idea. Um, so in January of 21 at the next cabinet meeting, um, I did a presentation and that's when we started moving things forward. And the goal was for September of 2022. Um, and there was a lot to do. We, you know, we, with Phil and many of uh, many of us in New England, we built up uh, the New England division website for for the Big E. Um, the big thing was recruiting clubs. So last year, we had twelve clubs and over a hundred volunteers from throughout New England, which is wow. I don't know how we did it, but we did. Um, it was crazy. And then we, at that time, originally we were planning four to six people in the booth per six hour sessions and you have to man the booth from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Blah, mm -hmm. blah. And um, so somehow we made it through and we learned a lot, you know, first year um, growing pains. And, um, you know, I was like at the end of it, I was sort of burnt out. <laughs> I can imagine it was something like that. It's it's you guys were in for how long the whole span of the biggie while they're there or just a short period of time or no, no, the whole thing. OK. OK. So in order to get the booth originally, um, I went, I approached the Big E and they said, well, the booth, you know, a booth in the Better Living Center is going to cost you six to $8,000. And I was like, wow. Uh, OK, so one of my clients, because I, I run my own little business, uh, computer business, and I talked to one of my clients who was an ex-president of the Big E. And I said, I'm thinking about doing this. You know, will this work? He says, it's a great idea. Go in as a nonprofit. I'll put your name. I'll give you my contact. And he got us a free booth. Oh, wow. And cool. we have that booth again. It's a $6,000 booth. That, that's how much it would cost if we were if we were not a nonprofit um, at all, which is, you know, no, no small amount of jump change there. No. Um, no so we we started planning for it. And um, we last year we applied for a $10,000 ARDC grant. And we got the grant, and it uh, it worked out great. We were able to buy, buy and and pay for what we needed. And last year we did a uh, an heiress contact, um, mainly led by uh, Fred um, uh, Kemmer, uh, AB One OC, and uh, New England SciTech, and they did a uh, 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 space chat during the uh, the Big E session. That was sort of built into the Big E and part of the budget. So this year we're not doing that, and um, we've made a lot of changes. We're not doing a live uh, HF station. Last year, Remote Ham Radio sponsored us for the 17 days. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't been to the Big E, it's and, and especially into the uh, the Better Living Center, it's very loud. So we put the kibosh on uh, on HF or Remote Ham Radio um, and such. But the the main goal is to um, we want to get people interested in ham radio and it goes multi-fold okay so not only do we get people you know we talk to people we put together a special qsl card we put together a special um email address uh, a special link in um in the biggie section of uh, any div mm -hmm. called um, fun ham radio and um so we we put all that in place so that when we started talking to people and handing out these cards, um, people would hopefully go there. We did have a few issues last year, which we're fixing this year uh, mm -hmm. and all. But uh, the idea is to showcase modern ham radio. And, and a lot of people that came to us last year said, ham radio? I thought that that was something you did you know, years ago. That it doesn't exist anymore. And we showed them you know, it's relevant. It's still modern. It's still new. Um, and 
you know, as the uh, the field day logo of a number of years ago when all else fails ham radio is still very, very, very relevant uh, and such. So we talked to people. Um, we had two more SCOTE oscillators on the, uh, the front bench and um, people came by and that was the big draw last year um, and such. But backing up a bit, um, the goal last year and the goal this year is to get people interested in ham radio. And last year, I think we, we spoke to between 12 and 1300 people. Wow. And, <clears throat> and I know some of those people did get their licenses because I got an email saying, hi there, thank you for introducing me to ham radio during the year. I got my test. I, I passed my test and I'm now a ham and I'm having fun, you know, and, and that's cool. I, so you're getting feedback, you know, even from the fact that you didn't even do like a live testing, you know, session and ran that whole thing. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is. And, and, um, you know, people found places to, you know, to take tests or, and, uh, and to study and, uh, hopefully, um, join clubs too, which is the big thing to build ham radio in new England and to build on, um, you know, strengthen the clubs in the in New England. There's 150, I think there's 150 club, ARL affiliate clubs in New England. Um, you know, so everybody can benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, of the 12 clubs that volunteered last year, uh, we had some from Cape Cod, from uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. We had um, uh, none from Maine, but we did have hams that came down from Maine. We had some from Massachusetts and some from Connecticut. <coughs> Excuse me. So, okay. you know, th there's interest there, and plus hams from all the states, plus Westchester County in New York and northern New Jersey came in and 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 uh, in and did parts in the booth. So uh, we pretty much covered the Northeast, and um, which is pretty amazing, I think. Very uh, cool. So. In your second year, I mean, obviously you get some, uh, and if, just to kind of circle back around, those that are in the chat or whatever, just want to uh, throw a comment out uh, or a question for uh, Larry or, uh, you know, anything uh, in this night, just uh, go ahead and throw that in there. We'll make sure we get uh, it up there and uh, get, uh, you know, some answers to that. But um, in your second year, kind of what is really the, from last year to this year, what was the one thing that you wanted to improve upon and, and basically, you know, get uh, more into the foreground for whether it's just, you know, club being club focused or ham radio as a whole or, or what is it like? So if I was a club member or I was a, a club wanting to come into something like this and help out, you know, what would, what would be the kind of, you know, plan or purpose that we should you know consider as we were kind of coming into this? Well, one of the things that we stressed last year is um, there's two types of people we did not want. One is you don't want to bring a techie in because you don't want a techie talking to people that know nothing about ham radio because they'll walk away with their eyes rolled into their head and say, these are a bunch of nerds. I don't want anything to do with this. Yep. And we don't want the person who's afraid to talk. Sure. You know, most of us are hams because we like talking and, you know, look what we're doing now. But, you know, you get there's a lot of there's a number of shy hams out there. So for somebody to come into the booth and help out and not say a word in the six hour session, they're there isn't going to help us. So we just need <clears throat> average Joe ham uh, or average Joe ham and spouse, which it happened a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was one thing. And we have a, a conversation um, email that we sent out with, with things, topics to discuss and things to say and things not to say. Okay. Um, things we want to change from this year versus last year is we're changing the design of the booth to make it more inviting to welcome people into the booth versus having people on the periphery of the booth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're changing how things are presented and what's being presented. We're making it simpler and shorter. So, um, you know, short two or three minute videos and, and slideshows uh, to bring up topics of conversation. We're going to bring more um, um, pictures and uh, information about stem related learning for uh the younger crowd which usually gets you know the it's a great project to get parents in with their kids and you know enhancing the stem learning the science technology english and math um or engineering and math sorry um you know so those are the things and one of the things that we're, we're greatly enhancing on which we failed miserably at last year was how we're collecting names of people interest names and emails of people interested and emailing them out you know a list of um, clubs in the area or links to clubs in the area and classes in the area where they can go learning and links to the arl and 
and all that. And, um, we have there's a, there's a core group of about a dozen of us that are that worked on it last year and we're working on it this year. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we learned a lot last year. None, only one or two people who were part of the team last year had any idea what a booth should look like. And then once we did it, we're like, okay, we need to make some changes, and we're hopefully doing that this year. Um, awesome. Okay. One of the things about the Big E is last year they broke records for attendance. So if you've ever been to Dayton, Dayton drew this year a little under 34,000 people. Okay. Wow. The smallest attendance at the Big E last year for one day was over 34,000 people. Okay. <laughs> to, Even to what percentage perspective, yeah, if we're... you've ever been to, in, to Dayton. Now, the, the largest day last year was a hair under 178,000 people. Wow. In one day. In one day. One wow. day. I've got the attendance in front of me. So the average attendance was um, looking at uh, probably the average attendance was somewhere in the 70,000 per day, 70 to 80,000 per day. Um, we are in the, the Better Living Center, which is a popular building, um, and it draws a lot of people. So what's that 1% of, uh, of even 34,000? Yeah, there's a big cool. number of people that could potentially pass by the booth that we could talk to. Very cool. Larry, for those who aren't familiar with the Biggie or have never been there, oh. where, where is it located? And uh, what's a, a, when in September, the, what's the date range? Okay. The Biggie is the Eastern States Exposition. You can go to, I think it's T H E B I G E dot com or, or maybe it's just Big E dot com. I don't, uh, yeah, the Big E dot com. It's held in West Springfield, Massachusetts, on the fairgrounds. Um, it started out as strictly an agricultural 4-H type um, of fair, and it's grown exponentially. Um, there is still the agriculture and the Big E. There's amusements for kids. There's over 150 different food trucks, so you can you can you know if you go go hungry because you can taste anything from fried oreos to amazing steak to anything you can imagine it's funny how you, you start with there. fried oreos but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that seems to be what draws brings a lot of people in there's um crafts and vendors there's um people that sell sheds and and uh, um hot chamois was everything and chamois and just about anything you can imagine um what we're trying to do too is we're trying to bring in um, volunteers. We're desperately in need of volunteers because the bee is only it's less than a month away right now. It starts at Friday, September fifteenth. It goes seventeen days straight to uh, Sunday, October first. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order for us to keep our booth, we need to man it every single day. So that's seventeen straight days, twelve hours per day. Um, we broke it into uh, two six-hour sessions, actually six and a half-hour sessions. Uh, we'd like the morning people there for nine thirty in the morning and to stay until four o'clock in the afternoon. And then the afternoon session starts. Uh, we want them there at three thirty so they can transition with the morning people and stay until ten p.m. at night. Um, if you're coming in the afternoon, you want to come, especially if it's a nice day. You want to go earlier because the traffic could be backed up for miles yeah um depending on how you come in one of the things is we we did receive a grant this year we received an eighty three hundred dollar grant and in that grant we will be reimbursing all volunteers for their parking and for their admission that's awesome so we, we did that last year too it uh it worked out good so you could receive uh because parking is ten dollars and admission last year was 15. i don't know if it went up this year i haven't found that out yet but whatever it is we'll be reimbursing it so um, we can't do it, you know, the same day. It all gets done. Everybody submits their their um, their um, tickets and stuff, and then we send a check um, after the biggie has ended. Uh, last year, I think I wrote we wrote I don't know eighty five or ninety um, electronic checks, and um, nice. You know, so it didn't cost us the, the mailing and the postage yeah, to mail them out, which right. is nice. Very cool. um, so it the biggie is the sixth largest fair in the country um it's the largest fair on the east coast it's uh the the attendance can be amazing uh and it's there's a lot of walking um 
when you park your car, make sure you take note of where you've parked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh -huh. um, one of the nights last year, uh, Ray A1SE and myself were, were the only ones manning the booth. And then, you know, when it ended, we went out there and raised like, uh, I don't know where I parked my truck. <laughs> so I went and found my truck and we drove around for 20 minutes and we finally remembered where his truck was and we found it. And uh, I had the misfortune to do the same thing um, uh, a couple nights later. <laughs> it's um, if you're, if you track your steps, it's a great place to go. Cause you'll, you'll, you'll do a lot of steps. Um, and it's easy to do a couple thousand steps a day. It, um, so it's a great opportunity to volunteer, but it, it's more than just that, too, is if you're volunteering not with your club, but just as an individual, one of the things that's really cool, which I found very, very interesting, is you can be paired with people, other volunteers. So you'll be in touch with people that you may not otherwise have ever spoken to, and it ends up being, you know, making, creating a new friendship and um, uh, having fun with, with people that, you know, you probably never would have spoken to. Uh, on the other hand, or approach, and um, it's you know it's a great way to make new friends and and have a good time. Um, let's see what else can I add. It's um, so if you were a club, I said say so if you had a club or you had a, people in your club that you want to get an interest, what would you recommend them to do in terms of bringing either stuff or setting things up for demos or any suggestions around that? Yeah, the the clubs are welcome to a bring the banners. If they have a banner uh, for their own club, if they have classes or um, websites or handout materials, they're welcome to bring that too. Um, they can bring um, radios. Uh, there's a nearby D-Star repeater. There's a nearby FM repeaters. Um, because we're in a metal building, HF doesn't really get out. Uh, I do have permission to put an HF station in, but we decided not to do it last year for a variety of um of reasons and one was ruining their roof and having to pay a couple hundred thousand dollars to fix yeah. it so we put the kibosh on that um and remote ham radio stepped in and and, and did good by us but um uh, we had our own issues with that not so much with remote ham radio but the operators who refused to uh do computer logging and wrote everything down on paper which mm. kind of defeats the so, so larry how many um so if, if a club wanted to do a time slot, a, a six hour time slot. You said, how many people are expected to be in that booth for that six hour time slot? Like could a club say, okay, we're going to do a six hour time slot, but then, you know, maybe within that club split their club members up to maybe do two hours at a time. Or is, are you expecting the same group of people to be sitting in there for six hours? Well, it's, um, uh, it's a six hour session and we need at least three people in the booth. Okay. We could, you could probably get by with two, but no less than two. Uh, that way, so, you know. I'm so sorry. if they had nine, if they had nine club members that wanted to do this, they could split it up three, three, three. They, yeah. they could do that or they could take the full day and take first session and second session and, right. you know, bring in more people. Um, we're near the men's and women's room. We're near a door. Um, we do have, um, foam padding on the floor so you don't kill your feet on the concrete floor because that can do a number on you yep. at, during the day. Uh, we do have three chairs. Um, I have bottled water there. There's candy for those that pass by, but you're welcome, you know, uh, to, to uh, help yourself too. Um, it's, um, it's really, a, a, the clubs can bring in as many people as they want, but there's, it's not a, it's not a square space. It's kind of a trapezoid, so no two sides are equal. So it's kind of funky shaped, and um, you're not going to fit everybody in. But you could have people in the aisles, you know, talking to people as they come by, you know, uh, you know, pointing people towards the uh, the ham radio booth. So uh, as a club itself, you, you would um, would you suggest them doing like small little electronics projects is to that level, or something more just kind of informational Q and A. That it, a lot of clubs specialize in certain things and some don't. Some are welcome to bring, you know, small, simple kits um, and show what uh, what you can do with electronics. It's um, you have to really think about you. If, if you weren't in ham radio and you were passing by, what would draw your attention to it that would make you want to stop and talk? 
and that's what we're dealing with. So electronics might do it. Um, the Morse code key, we have a, a piece of paper that has the, uh, the Morse alphabet, and we have a space beneath, and we have kids and people right there print their name, and then we show them how to send their name, and that usually gets them smiling, and then they start sending their, their name. And last year, we had a couple amazing naturals that took to it immediately, um, and then we give them the sheet of paper afterwards, and it's got information on ham radio and where to find out more information and something they can do. And one way we're, we're appending that this year is we're going to put directions to make a simple sounder and straight key so they can build that as a kit with their parents or by themselves and have the Morse on the backside with information on how to learn more. And uh, we're hoping they'll follow through. We're also, we may um, um, put together a whole bunch of uh, little kits with uh, paint stirrers and metal and a battery and a piezo and uh, and give those away to uh, interested parties. Um, so if family comes by and the kids are interested, we'll say, here's a kit, here's the directions, build your own, and here's where you can follow up and learn more. Um, New England SciTech is going to be offering a special class for the Big E um, with a discount for their classes, and they do a lot of virtual classes. So people can be located anywhere. And then once they get their license, you know, go looking for a club. One of the things we did last year was um, if you've ever gone on the ARL website, and, and, and I'm a life member for the ARL, so I'm not demoting the ARL here. But um, one of the things that, that I don't like about the ARL is if you go to the ARL looking for a club, like if I was looking for a club in, in the Springfield Mass area, if I didn't punch in exact town where my club is located, it's almost impossible to find a club. So in the New England division, we, Phil K9HI and Bruce uh, K1BG and myself, we enhanced how clubs are, are looked at and found. And we put together a map. We imported in the 150 clubs from New England. So you can zoom into where you guys are in New Hampshire and you can see the clubs that are in your area. And then you can click on the dot and learn more about it, find the website, uh, find the contact people, and that's something the league should do, and they haven't done it yet, but so there's much. hope. <laughs> <laughs> there's hope. But that way, you know, when people get their licenses, they can go to this site, they can find local clubs, and we all know, you know, clubs are what enhances all of us and helps build the clubs and build Sam Radio better in the area and uh, and helps you have more fun. Yeah, I, I agree. That's a big club. The club was huge for me. I mean, that's how basically the three of us got together. Um, we all kind of joined the club, I think, pretty much around the same time. Um, and uh, we met Ryan. Uh, Eric and I were uh, doing a POTA activation, and Ryan drove by. He goes, ham radio, parks on the air. And uh, that's how it all started. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the club – I think anyone, um, if, if someone's watching this that's not a ham or into it, I mean, getting into a local club that, that you can connect with, uh, there's just a ton of resources and everyone is just so helpful. And our club is very social. Like we get together a couple times during the week, like unofficial groups. Like we do a breakfast on Wednesdays. Uh, we go to a the press cafe and we take over a room and, uh, you know, it's come all, you know, most people come same sometimes you you get different people coming in, but we just sit around and chat. And uh, if there's anything that's broken or you need a question about something, or you, you want to see they show something off, people bring like the show and tell kind of stuff. But I've learned a lot. I'm, I'm a very new uh, ham radio. I've only been, what has it been? A couple of years. And uh, I've, I'm one of these guys that doesn't know a lot about anything. I just know the very basics and I like to operate. So I'm constantly learning more and more about it. And it's, 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 to me, it's starting to become fascinating because now I start to understand, but it wasn't because I took the test and I, I studied in the book. It's because of all the guys that I've been um, hanging out, hanging around with and the information that they've been feeding me. So yeah, clubs are huge. And I think it's really important that we get as many people who are into ham radio to join their local clubs and be, uh, you know, be a, a member and uh and kind of go with that because you'll get more out of it yeah i, I agree and i'll echo todd so larry i'm curious with the uh um attendance there at the big e has there been any, any um i guess interactions with the local high schools or elementary schools we um mike well like as i mentioned my club which is based in the in this springfield yeah. oil area um 
has been around for 75 years. And like most clubs, we're experiencing some issues with the older crowd versus the medium age crowd and the younger crowd. Um, so we've all got different ideas on how to do things. And we were going gung ho pre COVID. And then post COVID, I still think the club is not quite awake enough and we haven't gained force enough to, um, to continue the way we were going, but, um, I'm working on it, but mm -hmm. I haven't gotten there yet. But so we, we, we ourselves don't have, um, much access we have a little bit of access through a few members to schools and stuff but we don't have enough manpower to do it the the national club has been amazing with yes. um how they can get into schools and they do heiress contacts and they do um you know stem learning and stuff but we don't have the manpower uh, at least in my area to do that some of the other clubs have um and some don't but club wise again it's um you know, uh, somebody getting their license and not knowing what to do with it. Anybody can get on two meters, but there's so much more than two meters. And if you've ever traveled around, uh, my son used to go to school, college in Western New York. So between here and the six hour drive, 350 miles, I had every repeater programmed in. And one, side, one time I was outside my, out, my local area, the only repeater that ever came back to me was Syracuse. Nobody else along the way. So FM is not, and I don't know how it is in your area, but in my area, FM is not very welcoming, um, two meter FM. So there's, by going into clubs, there's lots of other facets and lots of other people to try. And POTA is huge, huge right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of new hands, like you guys want to get into it. I've been in it. It's great fun. Um, you know, and it's a great way to introduce new hands to it too. You know, yeah, we're. Right, yeah. I've done a lot of um, my activations, and a lot of people come up like and ask what they're doing. So I, I've printed out some information about ham radio, the ARL, and POTA, and uh, I hand those pamphlets out, and I answer the questions, and I, you know, they can hear, and I invite them to give it a shot. So I think that's a like that's a great way to get people interested. I hear I get a lot of people coming. Up, oh, I was a ham years ago, and I let my license drop. Uh, Wow, that's all you have now? Like that antenna is pretty compact. Like that's crazy from the old days. So, you know, even the technology is getting better. But uh, our club um, does something that is kind of since COVID happened, we do a nightly net every night, 7 p.m., uh, except when we have our club meetings, which is once a month. And, um, you know, we get anywhere between like 10 and, you know, maybe as high as 20 people. And most of them are club members. We believe more people are listening than talking um, or, or participating. But I think it's one of the things that's kind of grown our club is having that net and people hear us and then they reach out. You might get an email or a question or someone will show up. So I think that's, um, you know, for our, our repeater, it gets kind of a lot of use. And then people are on it. Like I always try to talk to people on my commute into work and on the way back and that's uh that's kind of how i got into it because before i got my license i was listening to the the net via my uh scanner <laughs> so mm -hmm. i didn't even know what what the club was and then i found well, out what's... well one of, one of the things techs can do is they can get on d star dmr system fusion so uh so i drove out to dayton with friends you know in may a 12 hour ride 750 miles and i was talking to my friends back in connecticut uh and also i have friends in eastern mass through D Star, through hot radio hotspot in my car, and hotspotting my phone, and being able to talk where, pretty much wherever I wanted to with an HT, or in my case, the mobile rig in the car, and that's something new hands can do, and that's something that's exciting. It's uh, I was camping up in Vermont last summer and sitting under my awning, and my wife was beside me reading and talking on my HT to my buddy um, who grew up in Connecticut, but is living and working in Dallas, Texas. And then a guy from North, or not North Korea, South Korea comes in <laughs> and, you know, a guy from South Korea comes in, we have a 20 minute conversation. And, you know, that's pretty amazing. I've talked to Korea yeah. on my, my HF, but to talk on an HT and my wife was so entranced, she's not a ham, but, uh, you know, she was so interested. She just sat back and listened and, um, you know, it's something fascinating you can do and you can actually hold the conversation down. It's not just five, nine, nine. Thanks for the contact. Goodbye and move on to the next one. It's actually right. conversing and I have a QSO with, and yeah. that's something new hands can do. And that's, 
you know, something exciting we're trying to show at the Big E too, what the New Hams can do. I know we're running out of time. Eric, can you put up my the last slide in my um yeah, my, we, uh, we, we've got some time here, Larry. So I, I, I think I, just, I got a couple of questions. Ryan, did you have uh, something you want to lead in with? Or? No, I was just, uh, you know, one of the, I think Larry hit the nail on the head there is uh, getting that eye candy for the younger ham or younger crowd walking through and get them interested in ham at the Big E. And, you know, how do you entice them with, I don't know, is it a, a digital waterfall of FT8? Is it getting them uh behind the microphone and make a contact with someone who's kind of staged off you know nearby with, on same frequency i mean that's uh there's a lot of different ways to spin it you know the little giveaway kits i think that's great um but it's uh you know i think all that is uh interesting uh you know um issue to tackle it's, and we need and the only way we could do is through volunteers yep. we need volunteers we desperately need volunteers um we have a sign up page it's on the uh, uh the big e page on the ne division page um there's a sign up link and it links uh, it shows every day and what time slots are available um and i check that daily and or you can email me at w1ast alpha sierra tango at arrl.net Okay, um, and um, we need your help to make this a success. Um, the The league has said they will not help us because they have to pay their people to be in the booth. And you know, last year that 1.6 million people came through the door there. There's nothing else in the Northeast that that has a public attendance like that. Yeah, they go to Oshkosh. I don't know how many can how many people they get from the Oshkosh plane thing. Um, but there's nowhere near the amount of people that come through the Big E. And, you know, so 1% of, uh, or one tenth of 1% still gives a lot of possibilities for uh, drawing that amount of people and getting people into New England and getting their ham tickets and getting them into clubs and um, becoming one of us and having fun. Yeah, so, Larry, did you that's want me to great. bring up that last slide for you at all? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Let me share my screen real quick. Uh, let's go here. Oh, I just got to figure out where. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Biggie, sure. So, we're looking at that one? Yep, yep. So, on there is um, we have a, a, a group, IO group. It's called Project Biggie, and you can join that uh, for free. Um, underneath that is the uh, any division, um, New England division site with the Project Biggie. And yep. uh, you can keep watching that uh, news about that and things we've done last year. Um, the Google form sign up. Um, we've just come out with a, a shortened version and that'll be going out in an email probably later this week. And uh, of course you can always contact myself and, and um, I can point you in the right directions and, and uh, answer any questions. I will be at the ham expo. I will be doing um, a, a talk lot. Uh, I'm at the ham expo. Um, last year we had 28 people that, that uh, came to the meeting and um, I think 22 of the 28 actually volunteered. You can volunteer for one, more than one day at a time. If you're coming in from a distance and you're, if you're going to spend the day or the evening, um, I have, um, we can put you up in um, local, um, local hands have offered, offered their homes as a place to stay for the night. Last year we had one, one um, husband wife team from um, uh, New York, the Hanover, New York, Han I'm sorry, Hanover, New Hampshire area, that they were exhausted after the day and they slept on our futon for the night. And, um, you know, it was a good group. But the offer is there if somebody needs it. And um, again, the main thing with the, the Big E is to uh, reintroduce people to modern ham radio and enhance growth of ham radio in New England. Uh, both individually and with clubs. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, we will make sure that all of these links are definitely down in our show notes, uh, uh, both in the podcast uh, and in uh, this uh, live stream as well. So you can always refer back to that. Um, and as always, uh, you know, definitely we thank you for being on, Larry. This is wicked informative. And I know from our at least my standpoint with a few club members that I've been talking to, uh, they've been super excited to want to uh, 
you know, get out there and, uh, you know, basically go volunteer in a spot. So you're probably will definitely seeing uh, stuff from uh, our club as well. Um, and if you guys, you know, are listening, those that are watching, um, those that listen on the stream later, um, you know, if you want to be involved, don't be afraid to just, you know, send Larry an email. He is super friendly. I, I, to, I firsthand experience have been, uh, you know, truly, um, you know, f- this experience of just communication and being able to get plugged in um, and being able to get the resources and be able to get involved. Um, you know, he'll definitely get you, you know, out there and involved and, and uh, you know, and just go volunteer and just, you know, you don't have to, you know, like you said, you just have to be average ham Joe, you know, <laughs> there's, you do not know anything more except how to press the PTT on a radio, then you're the perfect fit for that. And, you know, you, you, know, you just need to share what you know. And that's, you know, that's what's going to attract those folks to, to ham radio and, and want to, you know, experience more and, and, and be part of such an awesome and amazing hobby. Sounds like the perfect place for me to be. I don't want to push the button. <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. It really is. And you, and you meet all sorts of people. And um, But it's a lot of fun. It, it's um, And come hungry, too, because those 150 food trucks are waiting to find something for you. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring a lot of green, though. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. My, my my experience when I went last year um, was awesome, but uh, I think I left there like with an extra 10, 15 more pounds on, you know, <laughs> than I really needed. And no matter how far I walked, I don't think I was able to walk it all off. So, so it was all good. <laughs> cool. But uh, thank you guys for having me. And, and I look forward to seeing you guys at the Ham Expo next week uh, yeah, and definitely. meeting you in person too. Yeah. Well, thanks, Larry. It's, it was nice of you to come on, and uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, a lot of great information, and uh, we'll see you next week for sure. Well, Absolutely. Most certainly. Cool. All right. Well, hey, let's wrap things up here. Um, as always, thank you guys for tuning in, those on the chat and uh, those that will be listening after. The show, uh, 24 hours after this, uh, gets converted to the podcast, so you get a bonus episode in your feed uh, in a you know, day or two. Um, and as always, remember, if you haven't subscribed, you know, we, you can always connect with us by leaving us a review on iTunes because it always helps the show, um, or, you know, on our website, um, you can connect with us as always on social media and you can stay abreast of all of the latest information, shows and content. Um, and then you can always support us as always through Patreon and buy us a beer links, um, as that, uh, every little bit helps, uh, us grow this podcast and, and get ham radio out into the masses. So. You know, so with that, um, if you want to contact any of our hosts uh, or the show is, itself, you can always go to livefreehandham.com. And as always, uh, Larry, we did throw up your uh, contact very much, but if you want to just share that one more time so folks have that. Sure. Uh, anybody can reach me at Whiskey One Alpha Sierra Tango, W N A S T at A R R L dot net. Um, I check my email often. Um, and in fact, I check my email all the time. <laughs> but, um, uh, any questions you have or anything you want to know and uh you know if you want to come in from far away we do have people that are that are coming in we can i can set you up with carpools and if you do, if you want to, if you need a place to stay i can set you up with a place to stay so you don't have to pay for a hotel very cool very cool all right and with that well uh, i would like to say again thank you for listening and from all of us on live free and ham seven three seven three seven three, seven, three.